I have traveled to Rokoma, a village in Rwanda, in East Africa. I am here because of Jean-Claude. He's 19. He speak English. <laughs> yes? Ah, ah, nice. nice to meet you. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> to me it feels awkward, but I was asked to bring a football. And it does do its magic as an icebreaker. <laughs> And you also play football, right? Jean-Claude takes me on a tour around the house. He shows me the goats that he takes care of after school. I know that his family is not like any other family in the village. And Jean-Claude is not like the others in his family. He's the only one who never met his father. The only parent he knows is his mother, Beata. And it wasn't until a few years ago that she finally told her son why he would never be able to meet his father. And um, has your mother told you about um, the events when she was raped and how this uh, happened? I learned that Beata fled the village 20 years ago during the genocide. Hutu militiamen killed hundreds of thousands of Tutsis like Beata's family. She tells me she escaped death, but was brutally raped many times by different men on her journey. That's when she got pregnant with Jean-Claude. Why did you decide to keep the baby? <laughs> From the village of Rukoma, my driver is taking me on a trip. Rwanda has a lush green landscape and to me it all looks peaceful. It's hard to imagine that only 20 years ago a brutal genocide took place right here. I am visiting a memorial, a former Catholic church in the town of Niyamata. The memorial contains the remains of more than 45,000 victims. More than 10,000 were slaughtered right here. It feels creepy, but suddenly also very real. There are coffins on display. and hundreds of skulls. In my head they invoke horrible images of murder. It 
In the former main church building, I meet Freddy Mutangua, who survived the genocide and now studies it. They broke in the, um, the door and they start throwing grenades inside. Mm. But people were shooting, you can see. Um, even people were shooting from many sides because they came in into people. You can see there's some, um, um, how to call it, the black marks there. Yeah. These are bloods, actually, some uh, because of a grenade. They were throwing in many people, actually, in then too much blood and brains, and, and people just have their arm chops. They can actually go up to the, uh, they are smashed on the walls. Mm -hmm. All clothes you can see here, they are all victims. If mm -hmm. you count one close, it's one victim. So there's so many people actually were inside here. In 1994, in only 100 days, more than half a million people were killed. The perpetrators raped up to 500,000 women. As a result, around 20,000 children were born. They didn't have any uh, love. They didn't have any uh, stable, really, psychology to make them human beings. So, um, as a consequence of the rape during genocide, the children who, came, who was, were born from the rape, they have so many challenges in terms of relationships, in terms of how they should adjust themselves as normal child, children. Back in the village, I want to find out how Jean-Claude is coping with the difficult situation with his mother. Hello. 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 <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. Good to see you again. <laughs> when Beata leaves us in the banana grove, I ask Jean Claude how he felt when his mother mistreated him as a child. That sounds very wise, but I think when you are a child, you don't understand that. And I'm wondering, didn't, I mean, how did you react then? Did you not get mad sometimes, or did you not want to hit somebody back or something? I know it's not just Jean Claude who suffered. I wonder how his mother Beata is dealing with her trauma of being raped. She takes me to a meeting that's for women only. <laughs> In their regular get-togethers, the women make baskets that will earn them some extra money. And they also get a chance to talk among themselves in private. All these women lost relatives in the genocide, and many have experienced sexual violence. Jean-Claude's way to let off steam and forget about his problems is playing football with his friends. I can't help but wonder if, after all that's happened to his family, he can imagine having children of his own one day. And what kind of father he would be. Mm. 
nkabigisha uburyo bagomba kubana neza n'abagenzi babo eh nkabigisha imico myiza yese I feel humbled by Jean Claude's positive outlook His family has really seen the worst in humanity and yet they have chosen not to let hatred govern their lives With the song the family wishes that I will come back one day. I'd love to return to see Jean-Claude as a father. <laughs>